children to church at this time. I guess we got workers. They're not decimated with blue, are they? <laughs> I turn it on. I, there we go. All right, children's church. Y'all have fun this morning. All right. The rest of us gonna have some fun this morning. <clears throat> All right. Way to go, Deb. That got me. <laughs> about simply that we are going to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. <clears throat> Rejoicing has the idea of doing something over and over again. Uh, if you uh, remove something, you got to take something that's already in place, right? Uh, if you're going to repeat, you're going to, you're going to re-say something over and over. When you're going to rejoice, you're going to once again over and over extend that joy that's inside of you. I have found in my own life, and I'm thinking the life of most of us as Christians today, is simply this, we don't really do that picture right there. We need to learn that our life is in Christ and we are to rejoice. Amen. Our life ought to be all wrapped up in Christ. I am crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live, yet not I but Christ liveth in me. How about you? Are you saved today? And praise God, it's more than just being rescued from the pits of hell. Amen. It is the, to be given life, the life of Christ. Amen. And today, I choose to rejoice. I don't know about you, but I choose to rejoice today. Amen. I mean, I didn't know when I walked in this morning that there would be flu and people be having flu. We wouldn't have regular stuff, but God knew, right? Uh, you know, we don't have to follow the menu. We don't need a menu. We just need the presence of God. Amen. We don't need anything else today but the presence of God. Uh, I'm here to tell you, uh, we need to rejoice and thank God for His presence. It's already here. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always and again, I say rejoice. This is the Apostle Paul. Stop looking at all the cares and concerns of the world. Stop looking at your circumstances rise above the circumstances of your life. I've said this before. I've heard it preached by other preachers. Your circumstances are like dark clouds. And they block the sunlight. Well, guess what? The sun is still up there. But if you could rise up above those clouds, if you could get up above it, you would see clearly that the sun is still shining. And our God is still in control. Amen. We allow too many things in the world to distract us. Amen. We allow too many cares and concerns yes. and problems and sins mm -hmm. and issues. It's time to rise above the circumstance Amen. and rejoice Amen. in the Lord. Amen. So rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3. The Bible tells us this, my son, forget not my law. This is how we are going to learn to live a rejoicing, Christ-filled life. My son, forget not my law. That's key. The word law is a metaphor for the Bible. Forget not the word of God. Everything you need is in the Bible. Forget not my law. Let thy heart keep my commandments. By the way, your heart... And you'll see this again in a few moments. The word in Hebrew means your innermost being. It's your soul. You're created in the image of God. Your body, soul, and spirit. Your body is what is sitting on those pews. Your soul is who you are. It is your essence of your being. And your spirit is that part of you that God gives for us to be in communion with Almighty God. Amen. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. 
Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Don't let the truth and the mercy of God go away from you this morning. Right. Remember the truth and the mercy of God is far greater than any circumstance or any problem of life. Amen. So take the mercy and truth, the word of God. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of your heart, your innermost being. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart Amen. and lead not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. By the way, that little word acknowledge right there means to fully surrender to the understanding of. Amen. So in all your ways you want to fully surrender. To the understanding of God. Let's pray this morning. Dear Father, we come to you. And first of all, we just want to thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are a Savior. You are Almighty God. Lord, we thank you that you're the Prince of Peace. We thank you, Lord, that, that you still save sinners like us. We ask you, Lord, Father, today if there is one soul that's lost, that today might be that day you show them that you love them. You died on the cross. You were buried and rose again for them. Show them the truth of the gospel. I pray, God, that you would save that sinner near as hell. Yes. And I pray, Father, for your saints that are here today. Yes. Lord God, there's so many issues in life, so many cares and concerns, so many problems, so many distractions. Lord. I pray, Father, during the remainder of this time that we have together, that Almighty God, you would help us to just lay them at the feet of Jesus. And Lord God, that we would worship you, we would adore you, we would praise you for your goodness and your mercy. You are worthy of all of our praise. And I pray, God, that you would just have your will and way in our church. And Lord, we would leave this place rejoicing, thankful, and praising your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, I just want to thank you for the scripture. And I ask you now, you would just take it and multiply it to our understanding. And just magnify yourself above any and all that are here today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So he gives us some things not to do. And I want you to understand to rejoice and find that, that life of rejoicing is not really a list of do's and don'ts. Uh, when we're talking about things to do and things not to do, don't make it a list and go, okay, I said a prayer this morning, therefore I should be rejoicing. Okay, I, I said, thank you, Jesus, for my food. Okay, I should be rejoicing. And, and I'm in a bad way, but I said, okay, God, here's my stuff. You take care of it. It's not a list of do's and a list of don'ts so that you find rejoicing. Rejoicing comes from your heart. And if you don't get anything else out of this today, it comes from the inward part of your heart, your soul, that inner essence of you. You've got to make your will God's will. And you've got to turn your heart towards God's heart. And that, my friend, is not a do in the physical sense. It is a do in the spiritual sense. In the essence that we surrender to the magnitude, to the majesty, the magnanimity of Almighty God. He is the only one that can change a heart. He's the only one that can change my heart. He's the only one that can change your heart. He is the only one that can do what needs to be done in our lives in this day. Are y'all with me on that? Amen. So I want you to understand as we go through this list of some things not to do, they're going to sound a little bit like some things we ought to do, and don't get confused. Wait to the end, and I believe you'll get it. Like that song said, and it was talking about hanging there like a hair on a biscuit. Amen. I wish I could remember the words of that. <laughs> pretty interesting. It wasn't good, but it was interesting. <laughs> Some things not to do. If you want to have a life of rejoicing, forget not my law. God said that in Proverbs chapter number 3. He says don't forget my law. Don't forget the words that I put in the Bible. Let thy heart keep my commandments. My friend, I want you to understand you've got to take the words that are written on this page and put them inside your heart. As a matter of fact, the psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. And so it is the Bible, and you've heard this all your life if you've been saved or in church your life. You've heard this. The Bible will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the Bible. Is that not true? And so we have to hide God's law inside of our heart. How do you do it? 
You start out first and foremost by opening up the Bible and reading what it says for yourself. Don't just take Sunday morning when I put scripture on the overhead and go, well, I read my Bible this week. No, you didn't. You read my Bible this week. Read your own Bible this week. And you will find out that God still speaks. Do you want to know why we don't have rejoicing in our life? It's because we're not hearing from God. We're not walking in faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We're not hearing God speak because we are not seeing what God said. When you don't see what God says, you can't hear what God said. And so when we read the Bible, we go to God and we let God's words come into our life. When I was a kid, my dad planted potatoes. Any of y'all's dad ever planted potatoes? And you had to dig up the potatoes. Then what you have to do them stupid things? Before you put them in the basement or you put them in the cellar, you had to wash them. Y'all remember that? So my dad had this basket. We lived down by the river. And my dad would dig up those potatoes and put it in the basket. And then he would tell me I had to go down to the river and get a basket full of water. Now, I did not know because I was not a very smart child. <laughs> so I'd go down to the river with that basket of potatoes, and I'd put that thing in the, in the river. It would fill up with water, and I would slump up through there. By the time I got to the house, all the water's coming. My dad would look at the potatoes and go, I told you to give me a basket of water. You need to walk faster. <laughs> so I'd go down to the river and I'd dip that basket. I, I told you I'm not that smart. And I'd dip that basket in the river and then I'd do my best to try to run. Basket's bigger than me. I'd get to the house and there's muddy water just running everywhere. Inevitably, I'd have to do it about three times. And finally, I'd get to the house and my dad would go, All right, just set him over there. And I'd say, I thought you wanted a basket of water. He said, I thought you were smarter than that. <laughs> he could have taken the garden hose. And what, could he not? Yeah. But instead, what was he doing? He was having me fill it up with water, and by the time I got to the house, the water had run out, and so had all the mud and the sand and the dirt. I was washing potatoes, but I was too stupid to know it. Do you realize that when we go to the Word of God, we are a vessel, are we not? Yes. We're a leaky vessel. The Bible says be filled with the Spirit of God. But what, what that means to be ye being filled is constantly we have to be filled with the Spirit of God. Why? Because we're leaky vessels. We've got to constantly go to the water of the Word of God and let it wash us and wash us and wash us. We're not all that bright people. And we need to be washed continually. And just like that basket of potatoes, it was the act of me running and jostling and that water working to wash the dirt off of those potatoes. And that's the way we are. We've got to be filled with the Word of God so that it washes us clean from all the filth we get on us in this dirt bag world we live in. Do you understand? If you want to be living a rejoicing life, you've got to be living a clean life. I am a failure. And so are you. I'm here to tell you, if you don't know it, I'm here to tell you because you do the same thing I do. I love to hear that which is wicked and ungodly. I love to cast my eyes upon things that are ungodly and wicked. I love to go and do things that I know are not right in the sight of God because I am a wicked, vile little wretch. And so are you. We are in a dirt filled environment. And so the only thing that's pure is God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that God has purified His Word. His words are pure words. And so we must go to His Word and we must be purified if we're going to live a rejoicing life. So look up here now. If you're going to do something, you want to check something off, do you read the Bible? Do you have a time in your life where you go to the water of the Word of God and allow it to cleanse you? If you don't, dear friend, you're going to get all clogged up with the dirt of the world. Amen. What happens when you take those potatoes if you don't wash them and you put them in the, in the root cellar? They rot. Because of the dirt that's on them, the corruption around them, they do not go and start to see, but they rot. And you and I are the same way. If we are not washed by the water of the Word of God, we start to rot. You get a potato, got a rotten spot on it, what has to happen? 
you got to cut that chunk off. And eventually, you get so rotten, you're good for nothing. And so we don't want to get that way in our Christian life. We've got to be washed in order to be used. Amen. By the way, don't y'all love French fries? Amen. Don't y'all love baked potatoes? Yeah. Don't y'all love potato soup? Yeah. You know what? You're going to have none of that if you've got filthy, dirty, rotten potatoes. Yeah. You've got to have good, clean potatoes. Come on, y'all. Hey, y'all like coming to church? Y'all yeah. like y'all like coming to church? You like singing the songs? I know some of you don't sing songs. You know why? Because that's a big old lump of dirt on your soul. You don't sing because you're rotten. That little instant inside that says, I'm filled with joy. you got to cover it up with dirt, you're rotten. You need to cut that thing off so that that little fresh part can shine out of you. You like to pray? I love to pray. Oh, God, thank you for this day. Thank you. If you don't pray, that little part of your life is covered with dirt and it's going to rot. Cut it off and let your prayer out. You like to praise God? Hallelujah. That's not, you're covered with, you get the picture. Let your heart keep the commandments of God. Your heart is the center of your being. Don't ever forget that. It is your soul. Your soul. Is your soul clean? Is your soul rejoicing? Is your heart on fire for God? Or are you coated and covered in the filth of the word? world? Go to the word and let it clean you. Look at this. He that hath my commandments. This is New Testament. What are the commandments? It's another way of saying the word of God. Am I right? Yes. The commandments, the laws of God, the precepts, the, the understanding of God. <laughs> he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loved me. Look at what Jesus said. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. Look at this very carefully. He that has my commandments. How many of y'all have a Bible? Amen. Well, hallelujah. How many of y'all got more than one? Good, but if you don't read it, you don't really have it. Right. You're a possessor of it, but not a container of it. Right. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to the French fries. When I love McDonald's French fries. I think I like tailgate French fries better than McDonald's French fries. <laughs> but if you go to McDonald's and you go to tailgate and you order fries, and they bring you that little fries out and sit them in front of you, you can look at them and go, man, they look good. You can, you can smell them and go, they smell real good. But you only possess them. You're not a container of them. When you open up your mouth and shove them down your little pie hole, you can open a container for all of your French fries. Am I right? Now, nature itself suggests you don't keep it very long. Depends on how greasy they are, am I right? So, what do you do? If you want more of them inside, you've got to put more on the inside. Sooner or later, you're going to resemble that you are a container of French fries. <laughs> and the same way as it is in the Christian life, the more the Word of God you put in you, Amen. yes, you're going to leak it out. Yes, it's going to keep putting it in. Eventually, you're going to have a life of rejoicing, and people are going to go, be filled with the Spirit of God, filled with the Word of God. Amen. Ain't that the truth? Amen. I figured y'all understand French fries. <laughs> Now look at this. He it is that loveth me. Who? That keeps them. To keep them doesn't mean, okay, I got a checklist. I, I, I obeyed this one. To keep them means that you contain them. A keeper. A, a binder. A bowl with a lid on it. You keep them. On the inside, you're a container. And he that loveth me, look at this. A little red thing in whatever. He that loveth me shall be loved in my father. I never suggest you look down at a little red like that. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm not the price of all from the truth. And I'm blind in my eye. He that loveth me, love me shall be loved in my father, and I will love him. Agape, 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 agape. And will manifest myself unto him. I will make myself known. Look at this. Lord. Judas said unto him, not scared, but back up. That word manifest means to exhibit in person or disclose by words. Look up here. When you want to be a container of the word of God, I want you to know that God himself is going to manifest himself. He's going to make himself known in person and in word. You're going to feel the presence of God. You're going to read about the presence of God. You're going to know the presence of God. You're going to experience the presence of God. You're going to display the presence of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, you will. 
you're going to be filled with joy. See how simple? So simple. Jesus answered and said unto him, talking, talking about who? Talking about Judas Iscariot. He said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Now again, that word keep means to be a container of, a holder of. He'll keep my words, and my Father will agape. Agape love means sacrificial love. Love in action. And he and we, we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Look at that. You see that? If a man loves me, he'll keep my words and my Father will. If you love God, you're going to want to be a container of God. Does your heart love God? Let's try this again. Y'all with me? Yeah. Does your heart, the essence of your being, your very soul, to hide the word of God in your heart that you might not sin against God, does your heart love God? Yes. Yeah. If your heart loves God, it must be a lover of the word of God. Yeah. Now look at this. Jesus, when, when he was uh, talking, he said, my, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, who the Father will send in my name, he'll teach you all things. Now listen to me. I'm not teaching you this today. Even using that little elementary uh, thing about the French fries. You know who uses that? God uses that. Right. It's the Holy Spirit of God that can take little earthly things that we deal with every day. And he can take that and show you great spiritual truth. Amen. Amen. Because you have the Holy Spirit of God on the inside if you're saved. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit of God that takes the word of God and shows you the truth of God. That's right. Look, peace. I'll leave with you. Here's another question I have. In your soul, in your heart, the essence of your being, do you have peace? Amen. If you're living a, a life today where you don't have the peace of God or the peace with God, I want you to understand you can. First of all, you have to have the peace with God. Yeah. That is, you've got to be repentant, believe. You've got to put your trust and faith in Christ for salvation. Now, once you get that salvation, then you need to have the peace of God. And the peace of God comes in the presence of God. And remember, we've already talked about that. It's the word manifest. And he'll manifest himself to you in both a written sense and a physical Hallelujah. sense. Yes, and so when you have the Prince of Peace living on the inside, and you want the peace of God, go ahead and go back to God. And go to God daily and ask him to show you truth. Reveal to you truth. Amen. Ask God. Yes. It doesn't matter where you are spiritually. You may be in the worst spiritual state you've ever been. Just go to the Lord and ask Him. He'll teach you. He'll show you. He'll give you all that you need for you to have a rejoicing. Listen to me very carefully. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Why? Because God gives us peace. It's not as the world gives. Amen. Listen to me very carefully. We're rolling down to closing, believe it or not. I might have to talk on it. <laughs> now look up here. Get this. The Bible says that we are, we ought to always pray, am I right? Yes. Um, if we're to always pray, we ought to always pray, we need to understand that the Bible tells us to, to, to do that. And praying is simply, the word means to beg. Uh, to beg of, to ask of, to inquire of God because you have a need. Right. And so you and I, if we're going to experience the, the rejoicing Christian life, and we're going to have the peace of God, if you're living in, an, in a state in your life right now where you don't have the peace of God, maybe you have peace with God, and you're saved in this room today, you know for sure when you die you're going to be with Jesus, but you just don't have peace with God or the peace of God. You're living in such a way where your sin, you feel so dirty, and you feel like a failure, and you feel like you've been rejected of God, and you feel like, like you have been rejected of people. You don't feel worthy to pray. You don't feel worthy. Have you ever been there? I've been there. Let me tell you something. Let's get real. You need to get past your past. Why? Because if you have the peace of God, your past is taken care of in the blood. You need to have peace with God. And if you need to have peace with God today, no matter what sin you're in, no matter what it is that's brought, maybe you hit the liquor store before you go home. Maybe you get home and you turn on the television and watch filthy stuff. Maybe you get on your computer or your phone and watch porn. 
Maybe it's not that. Maybe you're eaten up with a bitter spirit. Somebody's done you wrong and you can't get past it. Maybe you're angry. Maybe you're living in a state where you're blaming God because your life has not measured up to what you think at all. Look, I'm here to tell you, you need the peace of God. And the only way to have the peace of God, stop. You need a heart change. And so the way you get the heart change is you need to stop and understand a couple things. One, your heart is dirty. And so you need it washed. Go to the Bible, and I don't suggest you go back and read Deuteronomy. I suggest you go and you read the Gospel of John. You read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. You go and you read the book of Romans if you want to. You get into the New Testament and you find out how good we have it under the blood of Almighty God. And you let that water start to cleanse you. Amen. And you will find out that you'll start to have a heart change. And when you start to have a heart change, you're going to have a peace change. Amen. Because what you're going to do when your heart starts changing, you're going to start praying. And you're going to start going to God. And you're going to say, God, I can't do this. I feel dirty. I feel unworthy. I feel evil. I feel wicked. Oh, God, that's just my feelings. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. I know that I passed from that. Thank you, Jesus. And you're going to start to have a heart change. Yes. Before you know it, friend, you pray about everything. You tell God all about it. You tell God if you think he stirred you wrong and give you a bad break. And I'm here to tell you, you be honest with God, and God's going to get honest with you. He's going to get honest with you in the Word, and He's going to get honest with you in your heart. Amen. Why? Because God will manifest Himself. Amen. The Word of God, praying to God, it cannot help but manifest Himself. Yes. And when He manifests Himself to you, you're going to find out God ain't in heaven with a stick. Just waiting on you to mess up again so he can whack you. You're going to find out that God loves you. God's merciful. God's gracious. God's forgiven. God is loving. God's forgiven. You're going to find out the more you go to this word and the more you go to God in prayer, regardless of your emotion and feelings, God will manifest himself to you in the way you need. It may not always be the way you want. It'll be the way you need. Is everybody still with me? Yeah. I'm telling you, we're talking about rejoicing. If you ain't rejoicing, look, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives his honor. Right. Here's some things not to do. Don't forget God's law. He said, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them in your heart. Amen. To bind them about your neck. It's an Old Testament understanding of this. In the Old Testament, whenever there was something special, that a child of God, and one of those Old Testament saints, when, when God out of his word would show them some great truth or some great uh, understanding that they were seeking, what they would do, they would actually write it on paper, put it in a box, and wear it around their neck. Amen. And the thing hung down to their heart. heart. Yeah. heart. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Now, I'm here to tell you in the New Testament, we don't have to walk around with big boxes of, of Scripture around our neck. You've been saved, sealed, sanctified, set apart, and you will one day be delivered by the Word itself. Oh, but we still hide it in our heart. Everybody still with me? Amen. Hebrews 10, 12, look at this. I will put my laws in their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Here's some things we should do. Back in Proverbs 3, he said, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thy what? Heart. <laughs> all right. How do you do it? You don't. But I'm here to tell you the secret of understanding and rejoicing in the Christian life. Y'all ready for it? Yeah. This is so simple and it's so profound. I'm about to just blow your mind. I mean, it's the easiest thing in the world to do. It's just a matter of whether you'll do it or not. Here it is. Look. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Your heart is the essence of your being. It's your soul. Your soul is saved. So stop. And start thanking God that your soul is already saved. Yes. To trust in the Lord, you are in the Lord, and the Lord is in you. You want to know how simple this is? Some things we should do to trust in the Lord? It's very, very simple. It's better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in man. It's simply this. 
just as much as you trust those pews to hold your butt up off the floor, you trust that Jesus will take you to heaven. Amen. He'll keep you from hell. Yes. It's simple. Trust in the Lord. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Put your confidence in Him. Put your trust in Him. Put your hope in Him. Hey, this is so simple. I'm about to give it to you. Hang on. <laughs> Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Yes. Hey, hey, you want to trust in the Lord? Your hope comes from the Lord. Amen. Stop looking to yourself for hope. Stop looking to the world for hope. Stop looking to money for hope. Stop looking to your husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend for hope. Stop looking for possessions for hope. Stop looking for the next high for hope. Look unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Look at this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Here's the answer. Trusting in the Lord is not leaning on your own understanding, which is your own personal knowledge and wisdom. Because all of us are like me when I was a kid who was trying to carry a basket full of water. We're trying to do what we're told to do. We're trying to be obedient in the world. But the problem is, is that we leave. We're trying to do it with the wrong equipment. We're trying to do it in the wrong way. We're trying to clean ourselves in the wrong way. Christian, look up here, and I want you to get the greatest spiritual truth you're ever going to get from me. You don't do nothing to be right with God. Amen. You don't do nothing to be clean of God. Amen. God does that. Amen. He does it for you because He loves you. He does it in, in you because He's holy. He's righteous and He's pure. Amen. Our God saves us. Our God changes us. Our God keeps us. Our God will remove us from this world. You need to stop trying to do to be right with God. Stop trying to do to make, make yourself more right with God. Stop trying to do to keep yourself right with God. You're right with God in the shed blood of Jesus. You're wrong with yourself and you're wrong with man when you get sideways with Jesus. But in the blood of the Lamb of God, we are already seated. Amen. 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 Already there. Listen to me very carefully. You want to rejoice? Here's what robs you of your joy. What robs you of your joy is your perception. Your perception of yourself, your perception of your actions, and your perception of other people. Your perception of yourself. You do something wrong, you say something wrong, you behave wrong, you get in a bad spirit, and your perception of yourself automatically diminishes. All of a sudden you start feeling unworthy, you start feeling like you can't go to God. Yes. You start feeling like God doesn't care about you. Yes. You start feeling as though you're, you're just absolutely worthless yes. and nothing you can do is ever going to change you. And you're right in that. Right. But I want you to understand this. In the sight of God, from God's perspective, you are none of those things. From God's perspective, if you are born again, a child of God, you are seen as a finished product because you already are seated in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Our perception of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Our perception of sin. We think because we do something stupid, all of a sudden, now God doesn't care about us. That we deserve to have punishment come our way. You ever felt like that? Yeah. Well, I shouldn't have done that. I guess I deserve. Yeah. I am one of those sick and twisted people that enjoys going to the dentist and having teeth pulled with no Novocaine. <laughs> because in my mind, I feel like if I'd have taken better care of my teeth, I, I deserve this pain. Guess I'm sick and twisted. <laughs> it's okay. I figure y'all already know. But I do that with my life with Jesus, too. That's right. Well, I deserve for people to hate me because of me. I deserve for people to treat me wrong. I deserve for people to, because look at what I've done to people. I, I deserve to feel miserable. I deserve to have this go wrong in my life because I did this or that. <coughs> That's not God's perspective. That's our perspective. 
God said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn to be pride and meek Amen. Then we have a false perception of what other people think. What we need to do is reach into our back pocket and pull out a big old can of, I don't give a rip what you think. <laughs> Pop that sucker open and shotgun. Like you used to do with Budweiser. Y'all remember that? Because <laughs> I'm here to tell you, I'm not going to give an account to other people. Right? You're going to give an account to God. And I'm here to tell you that when you get your perception of what other people think, and you forget that we are to live a life of what God thinks, not what other people think. You will lose your joy. You know why? Because you're never going to measure up to what I think you ought to be. And I will never measure up to what you think ought to be. But the only one that matters is Him. Amen. Let me let you know about a secret. He's already satisfied with me. Amen. Because it's not me that satisfies Him. It's Jesus in me that satisfies Him. I fall short. I deserve hell. Yep. I deserve judgment. Yep. But thank God I found mercy. Amen. Amen. My God is satisfied with Jesus. Amen. And it's all about you. If you want to rejoice, don't lean on your own understanding. You turn to the Lord. Everybody done? We're almost done. The wisdom of the world is foolishness with God, right? Look, I'm almost done. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Just acknowledge God. And look, trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Look at that sign. I found it. I said, that's it. <laughs> Hold on. God knows exactly what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Turn your eyes to Jesus. Amen. Turn your trust to Jesus. Turn your perspective to God. Let's all stand this morning. While the coming to